You're all ready to hear me complain for the next I don't know how long? Yes? Good. Let's go. Hello guys, welcome to another video. And this video, with this video, I will be taking a small break from the introduction to Tamil Jewelry series. Because I feel like this one is more, you know, there's a lot more time pressure on this. Not time pressure, but like, you know, I wanted to just, you know, work well the iron is hot. So, Ponin Selvan is originally a five-part epic novel series written by a very famous author, Kalki. And it's a cult, you know, symbol because it has a huge following and it has had a huge following for, for like decades now. And I'm surprised this didn't happen before. However, now it has, where uh, Pony and Selvan has been adapted into a movie series. Well, movie, two-part series. And it's a very high-budget series and it really, you know, it built up a lot of hype and it also, you know, was a box office hit. However, there have, as soon as the movie came out, the first part came out in 2022, they have been the purest fans of the novel series who were vocally, you know, against the fact that this movie, you know, was not truthful, was not faithful to the novel series. And to be honest, I kind of empathize because when I first saw the Percy Jackson movie after reading the entire series, I will say that I was less than pleased. However, it is what it is. Things are what they are. I do also do understand that it's very hard to, you know, like practically be faithful to the book. But at least like show that you care, you know, at least this video is specifically about costuming. I have to admit the the entire, both the movies are a visual masterpiece, like the CGI's, you know, the whole storyboarding, all of it is wonderful. However, being the aesthetics and jewelry nerd that I am, I have things to say. And that's what we'll be seeing in this video. So let's move on. So firstly, before we move on, I just want to get the sources out of the way, just like I did in my last video. So, you know, again, before we move on to the sources, I want to make one thing clear. The fact that Pony and Selvin, for the, for the most part, revolves around the royals and the royal family makes it very easy because Chola branches are one of my, you know, primary sources. And it makes it very easy because gods and uh, royal figures were you know, the most popular subjects for these statues. So that makes it very clear, very easy. And also one book that I'm, uh, you know, using is uh, Anigalangal Agaradi, which means like Dictionary of Jewels by Anandi and it's published by the Madras University, if I'm correct. So check it out. It's like an entire dictionary, dictionary about jewelries and, uh, you know, uh, like a short one-line definition of them. Apart from the sculptures, my other main source would be Sipas and Nol by Ganapati Sabadi and it is no less than a revolutionary work for anyone who's willing to get into you know the Tamil world of you know sculpture and art and jewelry because the most of his I don't know 300 page book is about the end the top to bottom the A to Z of like these statues about be it their poses be it the material that they're made out of you know be it the jewelry, the hairdo, the poses, and also what each pose means, what each you know element of it means as well, and also the spiritual meaning it of, of well, you know, it sort of gives this insight into the agamic literature that really you know that were primarily dictating the aesthetics of these cultures. Now that we've got the sources out of the way, let's move on to the actual video. So we're going to get into, you know, the simple ones first. I'm going to start with the men. So the men, I have to say, I'm sure the actors work very hard on their physique on this. However, my concern is mainly with the costuming department. So the first thing that really like strikes me is the fact that the actors were either cropped in their hair or they were like uh, it was free hair or uh, like Adita Karikalan was wearing a half up half down for some reason and I I won't say I have an issue with it but like why because it doesn't really seem historically accurate it's like one of those things where you see like an English series set in like uh, 1400s like medieval England where the actress is like 
rocking this half up half down hairstyle that's what it was giving me because i am pretty sure aditya karikalan like in reality was not wearing that and also another thing that struck me was the turbans because as far as i know turbans are yet like you know during the time of you know the story is set in turbans are yet to become a mark of royalty but i don't know i might be wrong if you know if, uh, if someone can give me any references to that please don't hesitate like from what i saw the main mark of royalty was the crown you know the as we cop people call it jada magadam so the jada magadam literally means hair crown which is also you know where the tamil word for crown might have come from meaning you know uh, arasamudi which arasamudi again literally means royal hair because headdresses were often just jewelry that you wear on the hair which i know that's also true for crowns as well but here it's sort of different because dreadlocks or i suppose you know hair fashioned in that way was an integral part and a signifier of you know royalty and royal blood and nobility you see statues of shiva with this hairstyle sort of like a turban like hairstyle though that i do understand you know the how that can be mistaken for a turban but there are also styles where you would see this like very iconic like sort of towering you know hair however i also have to admit that notably you see this jada magadam hair style almost exclusively on male statues however on female statues is where you see an actual freedom an actual crown but either way you don't see both of these you see neither of these in the actual movie which is kind of disappointing because uh, they would have looked amazing and other thing that really like stood out for me it like jumped out at me is that the armor that both aditya karikalan and arumuri varman or pretty much any like warrior or like soldier were wearing is greco roman like i understand there was like greco roman like you know exchange during that time but i highly doubt that you would see like them wear that specific armor because as far as i know armor wasn't really that greco roman like breastplate style it was more like they were bare chested from what i know but uh, it was kind of disappointing that way because i feel like it sort of cheapened the antiquity value or like the historical you know authenticity of it they could have really taken a different direction with that one coming up next is like jewelry and we have to establish we have to make this very clear that men also wore ample amount of jewelry just as much as women almost uh, because you see male statues with these different types of necklaces kandigai sarappali arambucharam savadi and i feel like it's a very it's a it's a shame because it's a huge missed opportunity to really sort of bring back that like aesthetic that glamour that men used to embody though i have to make it clear that it's not like there was no research done you see you know jm ravi sarmuri varman sort of wear this huge like pendant pulipal thali thing so clearly there was research done but like they just didn't do it enough you also see in his armor sort of this tolvalai when i say tolvalai it's sort of this armband with the badra purimam design however they sort of incorporated into his armor and not as a standalone jewelry as it and it also seemed to be made of leather for some reason but the point being clearly there was research done but it felt like the research was an afterthought it felt like you know the research was just thrown in there for some reason when it should have been the main focus so that's really a shame but uh, yes with this we are done with the men and if i felt like there's more that needs to be said i'll be making a separate video but for now we're done with the men moving on the women now the women were undeniably very beautiful in both movies that we cannot deny you know be it vinodini or aishwarya rai or trisha all of them were incredibly beautiful women however once again like i said in the last section it was a hugely missed opportunity because i feel like they could have really elevated these women to like legendary standards if they just did the research and were like committed enough to go through with it so we're going to start with the simplest character samutra kumari because i feel like she needed to have been given more screen time because i mean she was beautiful but yes coming back i am not sure about the saree drape because drapes are not really my field of you know interest or expertise so i'm going to leave that to the people who do so but coming back 
but the first thing that struck out to me is her tattoos her tattoos really caught my attention they sort of remind me of like the sakyam tattoos from thailand but i'm not sure they seem to be some sort of replication of either sakyam tattoos or tattoos from the toda tribe in the nilgiris once again i wouldn't be so sure but uh, if that's where they did take it from i don't know what to say uh, because they really because there are other pachakut designs as well that are very easily accessible though not as easily accessible or accessible as you know mainstream designs if they put the effort they could have found it like how i mean i found it i'm just like a random like you know youngster on the internet so if i can find it i'm pretty sure they could have as well the next thing about her jewelry is like it was very disappointing because to be completely honest her jewelry reminded me of this like mainstream um oxidized metal gun metal tribal ethnic jewelry and it was really a shame because once again chola jewelry is something that's incredibly beautiful or they could have just kept it very simple you know even if they like harken back to like you know colonial india and the jewelry that women wore in colonial india for sri lanka and you know in tamil nadu they could have just you know, replicated that a simple attigai with no pendant or they could have used like you know a simple chain a manga mala though i have to admit i did see a manga mala but i didn't see that in like samudra kumari i saw it in on aishwarya rai you know i saw it on nandini but i'll get to the royals later uh, but yes coming back samudra kumari was a disappointment and also why was she also wearing this like half up half down like sort of moment in when she is meeting meeting with arun murivar coming up next we have the royals so we are going to start with hair kundavai in her entrance sort of served this like almost like chola fantasy i loved it it resembled the you know the kesham agudam the jadam agudam it was lovely but once again it was really not up to par and nandini they really they they could have really like elevated nandini especially her being the sort of antagonist they could have really elevated her to like the sort of regal beauty you know the beauty that loki scares you they could have elevated her to that level just like the koyagam itself is not like you know enough okay i just realized that i called the kundalam koyagam so my mistake it's the kundalam so kundalam is this side bun you see that women where you see this in statues of rukmini as well and i'm pretty sure that this is where the original artist of nandini also took inspiration uh, we'll be moving on to trisha so trisha's character kundavai is a real life you know chola princess and i personally found once again her appearance to be i don't know it could have been much better because when uh, trisha posted the pictures of her looks or first looks or trials or whatever i was genuinely a bit underwhelmed because like i said like look at these statues and uh, the jewelry the chola idiom in the you know in the aesthetics part of it is something that's incredibly very incredibly ornamental and incredibly dense and this i feel like sort of really underrepresented all that glamour because i j- i do not want to see bharatanatyam attire in a different font because people seem to have this assumption that bharatanatyam jewelry which technically is bridal jewelry because the original devaradiya were dressed up as brides of the gods according to this book but coming back people seem to assume that bharatanatyam jewelry is the peak of tamil jewelry and that really isn't the case i personally would argue that chola jewelry was the peak of tamil jewelry and uh, even the jewelry that women during uh, women wore during the colonial era in like you know in rural india in uh, say tamil nadu uh, generally south india and sri lanka are much better than what we are given today and probably because i think we just stopped asking for better stuff i feel like kundavi could have been much better especially given the fact that she is a princess and you could have given her like you know the 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 full deck the freedom the megalai the arbucharam all of it you could have given her that i i also include her mother chendian madevi even like her being the queen mother you would expect her to like to be in attire that would show the regality of her position the regality of her life in that role but once again that didn't happen either and also here's like a completely unrelated fact so if you remember the people who follow me would know i'm doing a tarot card series i'll be doing a separate video on that where the card called the devil features 
the karik uh, the very famous tamil poet karikal ammayar she was a saivai poet and her first imagery her first appearance in a temple was brought on under the patronage of sembi and madevi i know i was very surprised to hear about it as well because i was also curious about where karikal ammayar first appeared in a temple and turns out it was under the patronage of you know the queen mother that's featured in this movie uh, but yes one also a common theme that i noticed among the attire of the royals is that they were wearing this sort of modern traditional jewelry which is essentially the kasamala manga mala and all of these uh, you know different really heavy sort of ornaments now i do agree with the fact that heavy ornaments would have been possible back then i do think that it would have been possible to to not even like completely replicate but even like at least show that you done your research to take inspiration from them let's talk about historical accuracy and i want to make one thing very clear like one of my favorite youtubers bernard banner said historical accuracy is a perfect ideal that's impossible to achieve however in a project like this in a historical project like this it is my opinion that it is crucial to at least attempt to achieve it it's not like you have to completely replicate right because take the amazing film uh, raja raja cholan that starred uh, shivaji ganesan in the 1970s now this film did an amazing job replicating this jewelry and you can see that they put actual effort you can see the motifs the jewelry types but also you can also see that they didn't completely replicate these sort of um, these ornaments they took inspiration from them and it shows for example take raja raja cholan and even his mother uh, sembian madevi's sort of headdress both of them are wearing a jada magudam slash kesha magudam however you also see that the motifs are not exactly replicated from the statues they took inspiration but they kept the core intact they kept the essence and i feel like that was a missed opportunity because take prakash raj uh, role in the movie it's giving very much bagvali and bagvali is historical fiction so is this but ponnin selvan includes character from and characters who actually existed in history and i don't know maybe that's why i'm feeling so passionate about this is that they really you don't come across works like this very often especially in tamil but when you do i feel like it's sort of a responsibility that you see it through that you elevate it to the best possible standard people might say that well historical accuracy accuracy why should i follow them? like i said it's an artistic responsibility at least in my opinion and it sort of reinforced by the fact that a lot of people were looking forward to this movie because to them this movie is sort of a representation of what people know as the golden period you know the golden era of tamil people when the chola empire you know sort of controlled like pretty much most of southeast asia including tamilnadu for them i feel like it's a bit of an underwhelming project because given the expectation of it i feel like we should at least attempt to like live up to the hype you know because i feel like they could have catered to the people they could have served the children what they wanted once again i want to make it clear they very well could have they could have hired consultants they could have hired researchers they could have they had the resources to do so i wouldn't say issue but i would say there's certainly a point to take up is colorism see colorism we all know is rampant in indian cinema in general and i feel like though the novel calls for fair skin characters just like hire more dark skin characters hire more dark skin actors and like give other actors some opportunity as well like i appreciate the hype of a star studded cast but like there is also the same point i'll take up with the people who said well at least they tried staying staying true to so, like the illustrations of the original novel well the original novel once again it wasn't exactly like the truest to the aesthetic and like once again if the uh, writers were willing to like throw a majority of the book the very essence of the book out the window why can't they just like i don't know attempt to be more historically accurate on an ending note i just want to make one thing very clear it's not like i hate the movie it's just that i really wish the movie lived up to its potential because it's a project with a massive potential and i did love the movie the visuals were beautiful it's just that they could have done so much better i don't know how long i've ranted for i'm pretty sure it must be like 20 minutes now but either way 
thank you for watching and i have linked my socials below my email you can send me a dm on instagram please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section if you feel like you agree or you disagree or you want to add on to the conversation please don't hesitate and once again thank you for watching and hopefully i should be able to get back on the introduction to tamil series the next video will be about distended lobe jewelry so stay tuned once again thank you for watching and goodbye